Hello, my name is Midori. Hi, my name is Claudia Quintanilla. Uh, we film in from Toronto. Uh, I own a small store, craft store called Unit. And my friend Midori is originally from Japan and originally from El Salvador, but we live again in Toronto. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about one of our favorite crafts, that is Sachiko. Yeah, so I'm going to leave. I'm just going to show you one thing, then you get an idea how beautiful this is. Mm. Uh, this was a gift from Midori to me. And this is a Sachiko. I don't think this is a tea towel because it's way too special to be a tea towel. But this is a nice example of a Sachiko. I don't want to say anything else, but I just did want to start by showing how beautiful this is. Then you have an idea of what we're going to be mm -hmm. talking about. So, hi Midori, how, <laughs> how you got introduced to Sachiko and what okay. you can... So like I am more, like in the, before Sachiko I was more into embroidery. And then like I was always curious about Sachiko, but I haven't really done, done that much for quite some time. But I think like a, this, like a, the interest in Sashiko has a lot to do with, again, this kind of global consciousness around mending mm -hmm. and sustainability. And then, of course, like a Sashiko, the history goes is that it's like the, it's a technique to strengthen the kind of broken materials. So like the people like 500 years ago in Japan, many farmers they couldn't afford another garments so what the wives did for the husband and for the entire family is anytime they see the hole uh, they did sashiko stitches over and then like i i bet that at the beginning it was just a simple not too pretty stitches but as the time went these creative women started to have like a really neat patterns like with a simple just a simple running stitches and I bet that they share their knowledge and the skills of each, with each other. So, like for me, I just love everything kind of ancient, but also it's so accessible. Like you don't need much. You just need a simple fabric and then just the like kind of big eye needle. And, uh, and then all you do basically is running stitch, really. Nothing else. So I love the accessibility of that. And I love the idea of the sustainability behind it. And then also, it's pretty, like, just like, you know, like a, this one that I gave you, I use like a very thin uh, hand dyed thread from Timarishas. Uh, now the company has two different names, but the, these two ladies in Tokyo, they hand dye their own thread using plant and then the fruits and stuff. Yeah, we visit them. I know, it's, it's pretty amazing. So like the, the colors are subtle and I use like a kind of different colors, the very thin thread. So you can do these delicate ones, but also- I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, yeah. but what is the name of the two new companies now? Okay, uh, so like a, there used to be just one company called the Timarishas. Now it's a, a Nona Timari. Uh -huh. And then the other one is Enne, Enne Shute. Enne Shute and Nona Tamari. Yeah, Nona Tamari. Well, it's good to know. Yeah, uh, no. but still, like the, your store, your net, yeah, has stuff still... from Timalicious. And then this is Timalicious uh, Sashiko Kit. And then again, the, it's a thicker thread than this one. So beautiful. But it's so beautiful. And then like, the, like I said, that, that just like, I guess, when you talk about the sweater, you say that different yarn gives like a different feeling to the, 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 the finished products. And then the same with Sashiko, depending on the thickness of the thread that you use, the whole look changes. So that if you choose to use like a very delicate thread, it looks this delicate, and a bold one, it looks more casual, modern, and bold, right? So. And I love this thing. I, I know that yeah, it's really cute. So, so this is one of the uh, example. How you would use this midori? Because I just imagine <laughs> my for like I have a basket of like yeah. uh, bread and maybe put it on the top of the bread. Mm -hmm. but I cannot possibly imagine putting <laughs> any food on this. 
But so I, I have conflict. <laughs> how I should use this? Like the I myself because like I make the sashiko myself. That if you you don't do sashiko yourself and you just get the one gift, I understand that it's kind of scary to use this for you know wiping ah, the yeah, plate yeah, 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 or anything yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, but, uh, like would look like the absolutely luxurious lady with like oh my serviette. Yeah, you know, like, but uh, yeah, the, the, that you can do. Like, like, actually, I do use it as like a, a serviette too. Oh, and then also I do use it to wiping down the plates too because I make tons of tons of them myself. Oh, you know what? You can always donate them to me because <laughs> I I'm gonna put it in a frame and I, I, I was thinking maybe I should frame this or. Yeah, 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 so yeah, much yeah. work. This one, I mean, this one is like, yeah, I'm telling you, that was a lot of work, by the way. But anyway, like that, if the work is this delicate, what I would do is like the, you know, in the house, you have like a kind of bowl with all the junks in them, and just you know, and then you, you can cover the junk in the bowl mm. with this. So like a, that's what I do in the living room or TV room. I know you make a horrible face to me when I said let's put it in the sofa like this because for me it's so like nice, no? Can can I make I make it longer and put it in the back of your sofa and give oh, a yeah. bit more of oh, life yeah. to it? Yeah, yeah. I mean this is very tiny, but I think it's so gorgeous. Yeah. Like the thing is, like a, because this one is a kit, so like that what you made, like what you end up having is this, right? But the, before you do the stitching, this one come with the the already the, the pattern is already uh, printed, right? Draw it in there. So yeah. that uh, what I would do is that uh, I would make a photocopy of the fabric, so that uh, I will have the pattern, like the, the photocopy of the pattern, mm -hmm. and then I will just uh, trace them on the long fabric. Mm -hmm. And do this sashiko on a different fabric, and then put over the sofa. Or I think that would be gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I think I, so. I have done a little bit use of sashiko, but it's not really sashiko because it doesn't have like very intrinsic design. But I think it's the idea of sashiko mm -hmm. with the idea of layering it. Mm -hmm. So in my first baby book that I did, uh, called North Forty, I have a baby blanket. Then it's all made with like a run, running stitch. Mm -hmm. That is kind of like, I would say it's a chico and the very basic of a chico because the mm -hmm. idea was to use different layers, mm -hmm. layer them together and have a beautiful tiny blanket for a baby. Mm -hmm. uh, I, they're totally beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, but they're no, as this is like. It's, it's a gorgeous this, design. This is a gorgeous design and it's just in a plain background. Mm -hmm. And the, what we have here is the beauty of the the drawing and the lines. Mm -hmm. And the ones I did, you have the beauty of the fabric and the stitches were there just to support it together and made that quilty mm -hmm. uh, little pump that mm -hmm. I really love mm -hmm. quilts, you know, like yeah. it's like, and, uh, um, but anyways, I think this is gorgeous. These gators of Tamalitian, they're really yeah, the malicious, yeah. for, made very beautiful kids. Yeah. And I very really like it. Yeah. Uh, so, so I was just like to show you one of the the kit that Claudia has at the, the store, you need to have in the store, and then like that that more less complicated one, the easy version of it. So like I'll yeah. just show you how a little so bit. So I'm going to leave Midori on the table because she's going to be showing you guys how to deal with those small kits, and showing one of my favorite ones though. This kit that Midori is going to do, I find that kit amazing for a gift. Mm -hmm. um, for That's a year. For a gift, not just to give people the gift if you don't feel like to make them. Like, I mean, uh, if, if you want to give people just the kit and they'll do it themselves, mm -hmm. it's good because it's so complete. It's bring the needles and everything there. Mm -hmm. But I think they're an amazing gift for people in Christmas because it doesn't take so much time to make. Mm -hmm. And it's they're really. gorgeous and they're actually handmade and they're actually have a very good use. Mm -hmm. uh, like I really use all of the ones that Midori have given me because she made hundreds of them. So I really use my for my to put my tea or mm -hmm. to you know to drink my glass of water and I think make your um, plate and your thing look really chic and yeah. nice. Yeah. And, uh, and I really like it in combination with my beautiful mm -hmm. Japanese tea pad that Midori raw for me. <laughs> anyway, so I think they make a beautiful thing. I don't know if Luca can get the camera here at some point and show it to you how it looks all together. Okay. So anyway, so so I'll just show you, you the, the kit, what the kit has.
has and then like what you can get from that. Okay? Hello again. So, I'm going to show you uh, one of the uh, kit that uh, Claudia has at the store unit. Uh, sashiko kit, that is. And just like we are talking about like the, the other like a big kit that is like a more time consuming, if that you feel like it's too overwhelming, this kit is really perfect. You see, it's got coaster kits, and then this is what it is, right? It's like this, with it come with this little tag on the side, which is cute. And then this is pretty easy to manage. And then, it, of course, you can make it for yourself, but also, like Claudia was saying, that this would be great for gifts because like, it's not too much for you to make and it's a very practical thing and a pretty thing to to do uh, a pretty thing to have so kit comes like this and then uh one thing that i have to tell you uh is that it's, it's all in japanese sorry but it's pretty much straightforward it comes with of course the fabric for the, the two um, coasters and then all the thread, the sashiko thread that you need and then also the, 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 the thread for making it into a coaster and then like a blue tag on the side and then also come with the sashiko needle too. So if you buy this one kit, then like, you don't need anything else. All you need is, is scissors, basically. That's it. And then idea of the sashiko, basically, is like I said, it's a series of running stitch. Just go one direction first, and then go to the next direction, or like a, going like that. So like a, basically, the idea is keeping the direction with the running stitch. So that, that this is the same idea that the, the uh, basically, it just go one way like this and then come back one way like this. You don't finish each triangle like this. You just go one line to the end and then come back to the other side and stuff like that. So that's how you finish it. But like you see, like a, this one is this kit and then this is another one. And then this is also another kit that Claudia used to have. I'm not quite sure if she, like, it might be out of stock, but uh, there are different ones. And then as you can see, like I, I was talking about the thickness of the thread, this one was done in a thicker thread. And then this one was done in a more thin thread. And then like, as you can see, this is more delicate. And then this one is more bold and casual. So like the, it, depending on like after you finish your kit, if you want to do more stuff on your own, you can choose the look that you want by like choosing the, the thickness uh, that you like. Okay, so this is a close up of the, the kit that I was just showing you. So this is the book instruction. It's all in, in Japanese, but you can see that the, where the, the direction is going. So it's pretty visual, so it's easy to follow. And then uh, the fabric for the two coasters. And then two different sashiko thread, the thread to finish the coaster, the blue tag, and the needle and the needle th uh, threader. So that's that you get in that kit. And then that's all you need, aside from the scissors. Hello, Midori again here. And now I want to explain about a little bit about this beautiful embroidery kit from Japan. So this, uh, I think, uh, unit is the only North American store carries her kit. And her name is Alice Makabe. She's a Japanese uh, embroidery artist. And then always, like, I tend to be, I think I can say that it's always nature-based uh, design. It's beautiful. Like Her design is so beautiful. And so like that, what I tend to do with her kit by the way, this one, I did the, her kit class uh, about a week ago, and I'm going to do this one next time in a few weeks at the store. Uh, but like her kit uh, comes with all that, the thread that you need, of course, and then the fabric, and then the, the, 
basically it's meant to be mounted on this like a wood canvas after you finish it like this but Claudia uh, had this idea of like not using this wooden frame but like this like you can do this this is a finished product of this kit and it, like uh, what I found her design so beautiful that I just want to keep repeating on a different fabric with different thread. So this is what the kit kits does, but uh, I did on the two different fabrics, like uh, this one with a different thread, and then this one, of course, another fabric. But this one I didn't use the Cosmo thread. I used the Timalicious thread that I mentioned uh, in a different video. That the Timalicious is the, the company that, that uh, in Tokyo, that the ladies make their hand dyed thread from plants and the vegetables and then fruits. So like uh, their yarn, like the thread is so soft and the colors have, it has like a nuance to it. I love working with their thread and I use the malicious thread for this one. So when the design is gorgeous, you can kind of repeat on the different things. Like I can actually do her on the, I think like a t-shirt or like a shirt too. Uh, but it's just such a fun thing to play with. So I just wanted to show you the different versions of it. So this Alice Maccabee kit come with like the, the, the wooden frame that you uh, use if you want at the end. But also like, the, of course the fabric and then also like the wax paper to trace the pattern. There is like a, the instruction in English. Uh, there are some kit that does come only in Japanese, but there are a few that have come in English. So you need to be paying attention to that which one comes in English if, if you want the English one. So like an actual pattern and then the, the, what the stitches are and then the whole thread that I, you never run out of. So like a, you can use the same thread for the second project that you are thinking about. And then this kit doesn't come with the needle or the hoop. So you need to have like a hoop and uh, embroidery thread, I mean that ne embroidery needle and then scissors. That's all you need. Hi guys, Claudia again from Unit. I'm just going to show you real quick here uh, my collection of Satsuma cross stitch um, beautiful uh, series. Uh, this is something that the store have in kits. We made the kits really hard to put them together. So if you order one, you have to be a little patient. So I didn't know what to do with them. I have them for like about two years, just sitting there and I decided to put them in a hoop uh, and I just put it in the hoop really tight and then just sew it really quick around. And I didn't glue it or anything because I think that if I decide to use them in a different way, I could uh, pay attention when you're doing it then you hope somehow fit the city in an appropriate manner because uh, with this one, I make, uh, these ones they were okay, the ones on the hoop is really large, but with Holland, I make a little problem, I make a little mistake. When I was uh, cross stitching this, I make it too short and this what happened, uh, was too big for the big hoop, but was too small for the hoop that actually would fit the city better. So pay attention to have a lot of extra fabric uh, and you don't end it with these painful results. So that's all for today at Tatsuma Street. We have the kids at Unit and they're beautiful. Hi, this is Mira again. So this is uh, embroidery. Uh, I didn't do this one myself. Uh, this was done by Claudia's talented auntie, uh, Mata. And uh, she used the design, the design made by Kazuko Aoki, another very popular, famous embroidery artist from Japan. And she's also known her like a nature uh, embroidery. She is known for her beautiful garden. Obviously she gets like almost all the inspiration from her garden. And uh, it's just so gorgeous. Like there, this was a kit for the seasons I don't think Claudia has that in the store anymore, but you knit. Has... I never did. Hmm? We never have it in the store. It's oh. a book. Oh, it's a book. Sorry. Yes. Sorry, it's, it's a, a book. book. But 
like the her kit, the Kazuka Aoki uh, kits, Claudia does have at the unit. So if you love her design like this, uh, definitely come, like uh, take a look at the store. I, I'm pretty sure that Claudia will leave this example in the store like that. It's gorgeous like that. But also, uh, not exactly this design, but uh, she does have Kazuko Aoki kits in the store. So come and see it. And this one is not in the hoop, but look at this too. It's just so beautiful. Hers is- them, They're called the seasons. Yeah, okay, there's a book, right? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and in her design, I find it, there is like a movement, right? Even though it's like, a, it's circle, and then, but it, there is something flowing and, and moving, like movement. So like, I love it. Hi guys, again, it's Claudia from Uni Toronto. I do want to show you this beautiful thing that was gifted to me by my aunt. Uh, they're done by the, uh, the designs by the frozen punk, pumpkin. I love this. My aunt Anna made it for me. I, I um, how you say, coming from a family of big crafters. Uh, my aunt Anna, is a big expert in cross stitching. She's the one who told me how to do it. And you can see the detail in this. So soon on our website, we're gonna post this and we can make the kit for you. Again, this is by the Frozen Pumpkin and they're all done with DNC. And it's gorgeous. I think it's a, it would make like a very, very cute gift for a children's room. Although I'm not children, but I really, really like this. So uh, it's called History Time Classics. So, beautiful, eh? It's Claudia Gay from Unit. I want to show you one of my older designs and more light designs. Uh, this is my favorite scarf. Uh, I did it many years ago. I really know a yellow person, but I really actually like this yellow. Uh, the yarn doesn't exist anymore. So, I just want to let you know that I make it again in another yellow that I actually love and it's made with a mano, Jana, and um, it's here, and it's very beautiful. I love this yellow, and I just want to tell you something about this pattern, because it's quite easy, but I tend to use markers in my lace, but this is one of those laces where you cannot use markers, because the lace move a little bit, and the marker keep moving, and you keep getting confusing, so, just like a little tip to you when you need this pattern, it's um, really easy. If you see these things, they're going to be the division and your repetitions. And this line is always have to follow into the same place. So that's just a little tip about the holy scarf from you need. Uh, all the time, this is your beginning of the repetition. So don't try to use stitch markers because actually doesn't work. It's make you more confusing. Uh, so, poly start by me at, for unique.